Hey everybody, welcome back. Today I'm going to be continuing to disassemble my 69 Camaro Z28 and today we'll be removing the uh, suspension. Uh, but first of all, I wanted to refer to my other channels which I have uh, um, motorcycle restoration videos on and uh, there's a lot of in interesting uh, information there uh, even if you're not into bikes. So um, anyway, back to the Camaro. Um, as you can see here, we are starting to disassemble the front uh, uh, subframe and brake lines and uh, brake lines and fuel lines and so on, which you have to disconnect all that stuff before the front clip will come off or the front uh, subframe. And once you get all that disconnected, um, and also you can see here I'm disconnecting the uh, the steering column there. But uh, once you get all that stuff disconnected, which only takes a few minutes, then uh, you just take out the four main bolts holding the subframe in, and then you can just literally roll the whole uh, front suspension subframe assembly out from under the car. Um, and in this case, uh, you know, I have the advantage to the body shop's uh, lift. And so the car is sitting on the lift right now. And uh, that's really by far the easiest way to do it is with a lift. But if you don't have a lift, you can just uh, put the car up on jack stands in your garage or whatever, and then just do the same thing. You just roll it out from underneath. Um, so... Anyway, as the uh, video progresses here, uh, you'll see that we're disconnecting the, uh, I'm disconnecting the brake lines here, and then uh, my guys are disconnecting uh, other systems and so on. And when you do the uh, steering column, you have to actually disconnect it from the dash so that you can move it around and pull it out from the uh, steering box which is what I'm doing there. I'm disconnecting it from the uh, dash. Just held on by two nuts, actually. Pretty simple once you have all the dash disassembled. And by the way, I've had com funny comments about my steering wheel, and obviously that's the way I got the car, but I have a brand new NOS Rosewood wheel that's going back on the car. So here we're just completing the disassembly there. And as you can see, the uh, subframe and suspension are loose from the car right now. So it's kind of moving around a little bit. And I'm just disconnecting the brake lines right now. I'm not removing the uh, the brake booster yet until after we get it all undone. But now I'm disconnecting the uh, the brake lines from the subframe. You have to disconnect. The brake lines are attached to the subframe in about three different spots along the rail of the subframe, which is what I'm doing underneath the car there. And once you get those out, then you have to do the same thing to the fuel line on the right side of the car, which I'll be doing next. So now I'm disconnecting the fuel line from the subframe. There's two attachments in the engine compartment there and two underneath the passenger door. Maybe three, I can't remember the number. So you can see there the subframe is disconnected from the body at this point and I really should have disconnected these earlier, but it's actually a little easier to get to once it's hanging down. So once all that's disconnected, then you just 
uh, simply walk up to the front of the subframe and roll it out. And you'd be surprised how light it is at this point. Very easy to move around. can just kind of move it around like a wheelbarrow almost. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to disassemble the uh, subframe and the suspension and all of that. And then I'm just going to take it. I'm going to take all the black parts, the upper and lower control arms and the subframe and everything directly to the powder coaters and have it powder coated in its proper color and finish, which is like a satin black. So then I'm right now I'm disconnecting the rest of the f of the uh, fuel line that goes all the way back and the back portion has already been disconnected because uh, my guy has been working on the rear end disconnecting that while I was doing the front and the the rear shackles on this car they were just you know solid together and it was very difficult to get them separated from the car once the bolts were taken out. They had to do a lot of prying to get the shackles out because they were just frozen together. And then uh, once you get those out, you know, you start lifting the car up. And in this case, the, uh, <laughs> the lift, the uh, arm of the lift was up against one of the front shackles of the leaf springs, which is why they're not separating at that point. So when I was viewing it from the rear like this, I had noticed that and told them that it was connected to the arm of the lift. So he had to kind of like work oh, it out of there. I think it's... I think it's up against the lift. Is that what it is? Okay, Mike. Pull this side. I, I gotta hold the. Right here. You move the tail. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Hey. Yeah, you can go down. No, mom. All right, all right. Lift the car up. And like the front, you just roll it out, and it's very easy to roll out, very easy to maneuver around with the wheels still attached. Looks cool, huh? <laughs> there you go, Francisco. Yeah, it doesn't even mean that. But it's, it's, it's insurance. Yeah, it's never gonna fall. I know, but it's insurance. Francisco, he loves you so much, he don't want to miss me. So at this point now we can raise the car up and work on the underneath carriage and get some of the surface rust scraped off and and work on the patchwork from the uh, floor pieces that we patched in. So now you can see underneath the car here, there's a lot of just really a dusting of surface rust that you can literally wipe off with your finger and there's a lot of the original blue showing through. 
So I'm very, very happy that most of the rust that you see here is just a real thin dusting of it that's going to uh, rub off very easily with a wire brush and so on. We've got a big brush that attaches uh, to a drill and it just really scrapes most of that off. So, And you'll see that here uh, as the video progresses. I'll take pictures of it, but this is this is it in its raw form before we touched it. And then we've started to uh, patch up the um, where we welded in the uh, floor patches. And I'll show you that here coming up. So again, as you can see, we've we've brushed some of it off at this point. And you can see that the, uh, the surface rust is just coming right off of there and a lot of the blue paint showing through. So I'm really, really very happy with the condition of the undercarriage of this thing. It's just really in nice condition. With the exception of those patches in the floor, uh, the bottom of this car is in like, like it was five years old. And we've put a little putty there, and when that dries off, then we'll smooth that out and hopefully uh, hide the patch as, as well as we can. So that, that's just after one little scrape. And then here coming up in the next segment here. Now we've, uh, we've pretty much smoothed everything out and it's ready to, uh, we're going to spray on, um, it's actually a bed liner and it's called Raptor liner. Raptor, like the Ford truck. And that stuff is beautiful when you, when you spray it on here. Plus, you know, it, it you know, we'll put a rust inhibitor on there first. But as you can see, a lot of the blue paint still showing everywhere. And it just shows, you know, that the whole bottom of this car is in really excellent condition. It's just too bad we had to patch the floor. But, you know, hey, I'll take that over of replacing the entire floor. So, and as you can see here, we've prepared the firewall getting it ready to uh, to spray, you know, the satin black paint on there. And that'll be done after we paint the blue. But we're going to do the bottom first. And again, uh, I'll show you uh, as this video, at the end of this video, I'll show you the uh, the Raptor liner that was put into a trunk of a car and I'll show you what it looks like. But as you can see, the firewall's in great shape, and we've got it pretty much getting it prepared to, uh, to paint. There's the hidden VIN. Again, a lot of the blue showing. It's in really great shape. Very happy with that. And when that when that filler or sealer dries, then we'll we'll sand that smooth along those uh, edges. So here's the uh, Raptor liner that was sprayed in the trunk of another car, and that's this is what the bottom of the of my car will look like after we've get it all prepared and and sprayed on. So we're going to do that first. And then uh, after that's done, then we're going to pull the car into the paint booth and paint the blue so that we have the natural blue overspray like it was from the factory. So anyway, that's going to do it for this video, and I hope you enjoyed it. And please, as usual, please subscribe, like, share, and uh, hit the bell after you hit the subscribe to get the post notifications. And uh, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. It really supports the channel. and. Uh, you know, I'm looking forward to uh, 
doing more videos on the car as it progresses.